means it's time for another Matt Opens Toys. So we're now live. Um, there's some storms moving into my area. Um, some rain on its way. And uh, yeah, some nice rainy sounds outside. Wind, rain. Uh, today is April 28th, Wednesday. As I've already mentioned, it is uh, just a couple days until my birthday. And this is uh, week two of the special Mad Opens Toys uh, event called Turtle Fest. Um, so Turtle Fest is just me playing a lot of catch up with a number of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys that I had purchased a little while back. Is that too dark? Does it make a difference? I think the camera automatically adjusts. But um, yeah, so last week on the first episode in our Turtle Fest 2021 installment, I opened a number of uh, Nika Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys, mostly from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, cartoon line. Um, it's actually been a pretty busy couple, well, I guess it's been a pretty busy week since the last time that I streamed as far as turtle toy announcements. I'm going to turn that back on even though I had just turned it off. Um, yeah, so in this last week, Nika, throughout the month of April, they had had some special guest um, updates from the actress uh, Judith Hogue, who portrayed... April O'Neil in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie from, uh, it was either 89 or, yeah, I think it was 89. Let's just say it was 89, whether or not it was. Who's fact checking my stream? Nobody. Um, but yeah, so they had that actress as she provided updates for an April O'Neil movie line figure, um, for the Nika toy line. Uh, very cool. Um, it was a, a neat update. The updates were great. Uh, then a couple days ago, they made that toy available for pre-order. They also did a special edition version of that. Um, well, let me, let me get to tonight's subject and then we can, uh, talk more about some of the turtle news that's come up in the meantime. Hello to my one viewer, potentially probably my wife. Um, tonight on Mad Opens Toys for Turtle Fest 2021, week two, we are going to be, for the first time for me, delving into the Super 7 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. Uh, this is, I believe, wave one. I'm um, pretty sure. I have two waves that I've bought, and I have pre-ordered some upcoming waves as well. Um... I've never, uh, I've never had uh, any of these from Super 7. I don't really have any experience. They've done now a Thundercats line. They've done um, a Toxic Crusader special figure. Um, and then very popular right now is their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. So this one, I think I had kind of mentioned last week when I was talking about the Nika toy line. This one, as opposed to Nika, who has a cartoon toy line, a cartoon-inspired one, where they're basing the designs of the figures off of the 1980s cartoon, these are based off of... They're like modern reimagining of the original toy line itself. So, uh, pretty cool. Everything that I've seen on them looks really, really cool. Um, you can see here they include some text there on the back where it says, Choking Hazard may contain small parts. Adult collectible, not a toy. Bold claim. Um, for me, considering this is Mad Opens Toys. Uh, but yeah, so these are more directly inspired from the original Playmates toy line. Um, they come packed in these little protective shippers, but the packaging on them, which I have seen, is pretty cool itself. We're gonna get that out 
of course. Uh, oh, yeah. So they really pull out all the stops. I mean, they identified it as a collectible, a collector's item. And um, they went kind of high end with regards to the packaging on it. Uh, everything that I've seen about these seems to also indicate that the toys themselves are uh, pretty nicely delivered. Um, so you have the packing slip case, which is just your cardboard box. And then you've got the actual toy case right here. Uh, this is part of the Ultimates line. So these are actually Super 7's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates line. This one is Leonardo. Most often thought of, referred to as, of course, the leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Last week when I was opening our Nika cartoon line, um, notably, mostly a lot of like supporting characters. I would say probably the, uh, the biggest, most prominent character that I opened was um, Master Splinter, as far as narrative significance. Um, no turtles themselves, so this week we're mixing it up. Again, my first experience with a Super 7. Nice little slipcase packaging, and then of course we can reveal the figure himself, Leonardo. All right. Let's take a look real quick. Nice packaging. You can see he, he comes packaged with two portraits. So like I mentioned, these are meant to be a direct homage, um, a direct reference really to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy line. So these are kind of sculpted, as I understand it conceptually. They are trying to recreate, for people that may have had these as younger people, um, kind of the feel or the experience of what it was like when you were imagining these toys. So they take certain liberties with certain things as far as like the scale. They give you some additional accessories, um, but they also do things that pay a lot of like... Um, fan service to the original releases of these toys as well. So there's two portraits. There's a toy portrait, which is meant to look exactly like the original, more or less, um, Leonardo, uh, Leonardo face on that original toy. And then you have a more modern interpretation uh, and expression that he also comes packaged with. You've got these nice fully painted accessories um, for a modern touch. And then also, it'll be easier to see when I get this guy out of the package. Um, they also come with what are called um, sprues. The sprue being the unpainted um, set of accessories that are accurately recreating the way that the accessories and weapons were packaged on the original toys. So, my trusty box cutter. And I cut that. Um, nice packaging. I mean, very nice packaging. Marketed again as like a collectible. This is a little bit on the higher end in terms of price, I would say, um, as well. And, um, you know, recently they announced that even directly purchasing from the manufacturer, Super 7, is going to be a little bit more expensive, I guess the cost of plastics and manufacturing in China is going up. And so as a result, basically you're paying about 55 a pop for these guys. Um, not cheap, but we'll take a look and we'll see if the, uh, the quality kind of attests to that price tag. I mean, everything that I can see on this guy so far is uh, pretty impressive, I must say. Um, so I was talking about, at the beginning of the stream, what Nika had been doing for the last month, which was those uh, teases of the April O'Neil movie figure with the original actress, Judith Hogue. Um, a nice little cross-promotion that they've had going on for the entire month. And then in the last week, uh, or earlier this week, I should say, they 
they open it up for pre-order and there's actually a uh, what they were calling a signature edition which is the toy along with an extra yellow raincoat and a press pass that's signed by the actress herself Judith Hogue limited in piece count to a production run of about 2000 so this is what I was talking about before the um, classic or toy style sprues um, of the accessories where they're packaged here all on kind of the weapon rack. This is the way, if you had any of those old turtle toys from Playmates, this is the way that the accessories would normally come packed. And they were this unfinished, unpainted um, plastic. Um, so that's just kind of like a... Um, like a nice little nod to the uh, longtime collectors recreating that. I'll probably, I think, leave these unpainted guys kind of here in this packaging. Uh, the painted accessories just look really nice. I, I've talked about it before. As long as I'm opening toys, I'm going to have to always be talking about it. They give you a variety of hands to choose from. Um, Again, this is kind of that sort of modern detailing, updating, uh, providing modern toy options. Of course, the original Turtles toys, they just had the one hands and uh, they were kind of shaped in a way where they could hold their accessories, but the rest was up to your imagination. Now for the collectible items, they make it where you have a little bit more display options. You can get something that's like, they have a closed fist, they have kind of like a gesturing, somewhat open hand. Um, nice options, nice options. I think the default hands probably get most of what you need done. Um, a little twist tie here. Uh, yeah, so Nika had listed that April O'Neil up for uh, pre-order now, direct purchase from them, the signature edition. I was fortunate enough to get the signature edition uh, because it sold out pretty quickly. And now people are being monsters about it on eBay. And I think there was a listing for like $4,000 for the thing. $4,000 is pretty wild. I mean, it's pretty ambitious for a scalper to think you're going to be pulling in $4,000 for that, you know, one way or another. Um, Yeah, off to a nice start so far. Is, um, Super 7, the uh, manufacturer of the toys that I'm opening this evening, also um, showed some production pictures for the Wave 4 release. And uh, then they did some teasers, I guess, that went out in an email. So, of course, they leaked to the entire internet uh, of the Wave 5 of this line where um, basically the first four waves they had kind of rotate, rotated to include your iconic characters. They put one of the turtles in each of it. Well, of course, after four waves, you have all four turtles. So wave five, it was kind of anybody's guess as far as what they were going to include. Um, I guess there's these uh, fairly famous disguised turtles. Um, so it's like Leo dressed up as a samurai, and Raph as an astronaut, Mikey as a surfer, Don in his trench coat with like a Groucho Marx styled like face so he can go incognito. Um, I remember those toys pretty, pretty well. Well, they showed uh, Samurai Leo, and he looks very impressive. The rest of the lineup also is uh, other, what I would say are... Uh, Fan favorite classic characters. Um, all right. Okay. Nice, sturdy, high quality plastic. Um, good, uh, good movement. Yeah. So again, this is kind of sculpted to, to a certain extent, emulate and recreate the look of that original uh, Leonardo from the Playmates line. But obviously they've done so while using modern sculpting methods and giving um, modern articulation um, to it. 
And then of course giving you just like a ton of accessories as well. So if you wanted really to just like strictly speaking, recreate the original Leo Playmates toy, you could do so pretty easy. Well, hello there, Liz. What a cool cat. Um, this is kind of recreating, generally speaking, that um, original pose that those used to kind of be in. And he, uh, he cuts a very similar profile. These are a little bit taller than the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle releases, of course. Um, this, I guess, is more of a modern 1 12th scale or in scale with like a 6 inch line. One of the other neat things that you'll see when I open some of the other ones from this first wave is that, again, they're kind of trying to recreate what it felt like uh, in your imagination with these toys. So some of the scale... They didn't just one-to-one -one recreate what the scale was with the original toys. They've, um, for characters that kind of should be bigger, quote-unquote, um, they've scaled them up a little bit. I think the waist, the ball joints on the legs seem a tiny little bit loose. Not so much that he has trouble standing, but he may not hold the exact position that you're looking for. Um, I'm a little torn as far as how I might prefer to display him. Um, this original head is pretty nice, um, but I do like the modern one. Um, this kind of works both as just giving you a nice modern turtle, um, or recreating that kind of nostalgic feel of the original toys. So, I think in much the same way that I'm a little inclined to use the, uh, painted accessories, I might be slightly more inclined when displaying to use these modern heads and faces. They kind of look pretty similar to this light. There we go. They look kind of similar to the modern uh, IDW comic turtles um, at the start of the run. So again, you get kind of like a nice Modern sculpt and detailing, lots of neat textural finishes. I talked a little bit last week about the fact that actually those original Playmates toys, the sculpts tended to have uh, really kind of a lot of detail in them. The sculptors definitely had a great time. Uh, if you ever get a chance to look up some of like the concept art for those uh, original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line, there was some pretty wild like concepts and designs that they had and a lot of that came across in those very very fun looking and playing toys themselves classic leonardo uh, leonardo i don't know why i can't pronounce leonardo correctly i keep wanting to plug in an extra l where there is none um i got pointed out an accent that i have recently because I was telling a story in which I was referencing Best Buy, a former place of employment for myself. And somebody pointed out to me that I pronounced Best Buy, Best Buy. I think it was just the speed with which I was talking. Um, but it just kind of reminded me of like <clears throat> Matthew McConaughey, a bad Texas accent saying Best Buy. Uh, yeah, very cool, Leo. Nice. Solid, sturdy. Um, again, I think Super 7 includes the people that did the um, Masters of the Universe Classics line, uh, Four Horsemen. I think they originally started as sculptors for Todd McFarlane. Then they kind of went out on their own. I don't know for sure. I mean, I have not, I have not researched this thoroughly. This is not a thoroughly researched stream. But I believe that to be the case. Comes with a number of additional accessories. I'm kind of hesitant to take too much of the accessories out because this case is a nice little display case. Um, but you have essentially all of the original weapons that he was included with. Uh, I think this is called like a kukri. You got little knife things. I don't know the official names for these things. Weapon experts, get at me. You got your turtle comp open and closed, and a slice of pizza. I think most of the turtles in these initial releases have that. And you got some ninja throwing stars. Um, 
I might leave those be for now. This, uh, this Leo is pretty nice. Again, I really don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I like this. I like this head. I like the modern head. Maybe I'll, uh, alternate the ways that I display him. But, uh, it's nice to have all those options. Um, but the paint applications, everything on this, the plastic quality, the joints, everything's really nice. Um, again, I mean, they sell this as a collectible, not a toy. And I would say, just in terms of my initial experience so far, that's a fair distinction. Um, because most Playline toys are not going to have this level of care, the quality of the materials used. I mean, it's pretty nice. Um, I had been kind of waiting to open these guys. Um, and I was definitely spending a little time waiting on whether or not I was going to pre-order the fifth wave, the one that includes uh, Samurai Leo. It also includes one of my most well-remembered Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys as a kid that wasn't a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, um, which is Manta Ray. Or Ray Filet? I'm not sure. I don't remember his name. Goes to show. I think it's Ray Filet. But he's a manta ray. Big manta ray guy. Um, they showed him off. They showed a uh, leather head off. Um, a nice Krang that comes with two separate Krang um, toys itself that are very... One's highly expressive. The other one, of course, is, again, just sculpted to look accurate and authentic to the original Krang toy release. Um, it looks pretty nice. I mean, at some point, I'm probably going to go ahead and order uh, that Wave 5. This is nice. It's, uh, even this, he kind of, he has the same expression as the toy, uh, the original toy head sculpt. It's just, you know, modernized. So, really... Really nice figure. Um, different softer plastic to cover for the leather goods. Same on his uh, his colored bands here. Uh, they could very easily as well probably do a re-release of all of the mainline turtles in like Mirage colors. And I'm sure they would have a lot of people that would be very, very happy. Mirage colors would just mean all of their bandanas would be, you know, red. And uh, their gear would be probably brown. Um, but I'm sure a lot of people would be happy to have that as an option. This is, uh, this is very nice. I mean, I, I didn't really doubt it. One of the other toys that they had released was a um, Super 7 Baxter Stockton. And I think that was one of the ones that really kind of sold me on giving these guys a try. Um, but, I mean, yes great quality so far Leonardo looking great for, uh, first of the four turtles um, right now Leonardo and Raphael are out in waves one and two respectively um, wave three I don't think is out yet wave four is going to be later this year I think wave three is supposed to be out pretty soon um, yeah good stuff good stuff um, okay, let's just keep trucking. So yeah, there was a lot, uh, that came out in this last week. I also, last time I know I mentioned the Android Krang body, I was able, hey, thankfully, to order that directly from Nika. Um, I've, I've bought a lot of turtles in the last week, uh, which is funny because, like, I was just working through clearing out all of these turtles that I have right now, it doesn't end. It really doesn't end because I keep buying toys and they keep making nice toys. It's not a, it's not the worst thing in the world. I feel like again, the quality on these, they're just so nice. Um, some of these, they're gonna slowly kinda ramp up, I think, in cost on the aftermarket. And you'll start to see them, I wanna say get pretty expensive, um, in all likelihood. 
uh, very high quality. No real indication as far as what a release or re-release kind of likelihood would be for these guys. Um, but I think it's a good idea to pick them up now because even though there is a little bit of an aftermarket markup, they're still a fairly recent release and that means you're not paying too bad of a markup just yet. You got the shredder symbol and there you go. There's a, there's shredder himself. Uh, now this one is another interesting decision. Uh, if you take a look at the, the heads that are included, you've got, of course, shredder, and then you have this very weird shredder, which is the exact same head sculpt, but there's a band of paint eyebrows, uh, painted on as well. This is, again, a homage, a direct reference to the original figures because in the original figures they did this weird uh, Cro-Magnon heavy brow paint on the Shredder toy because they didn't realize that that was not, in fact, his eyebrow ridge. It was just part of the Shredder's helmet. Yes. Uh, so, again, kind of a neat little um, homage to the original toy. Uh, I guess it's, I've seen where some people have said that they're displaying him with that head. I can't see myself doing that. I think it's a nice, funny nod, but, uh, I don't think it, I don't think it looks very good. So you got Shredder, same high quality packaging. I'm going to hold on to the packaging again because, uh, it comes with a lot of bonus accessories that you're not really able to display him all with at one time. So it's nice to have that nice packaging as a little backup. Um, <clears throat> so you can use it for storage too. I might with these, like I said, I actually have two waves of this uh, line. In all likelihood, I think I'm just gonna get through the first wave tonight and then uh, we'll keep Turtle Fest trucking um, for, you know, at least another stream. We'll see if that's going to be in a week or... I'm actually taking Friday off from work because this Friday is my birthday, April 30th. Hey, happy birthday to me. Old. Old and only getting older. Have not figured out the getting younger exploit. So there you have your usual, the sprued weapons, unpainted, brown plastic. Um, the original Shredder toy kind of had like a uh, outward reaching flat hand for one of his hands. Here they give you an option of displaying him with that style hand. And you've got a nice hard plastic cape that you can use, or he actually comes uh, in a soft plastic robe. So this is again just kind of giving you some options uh, with regards to how you may decide to display Shredder. Um, the original Shredder toy, of course, had a cloth cape and little cloth pants. I thought I heard my wife say something to me. I could be wrong. Uh, These, you know, with the packaging, I'm, I'm like hesitant to get rid of anything, but the thing about packaging is that they're mostly, like most packaging is usually only going to be useful with regards to if you have an intent to resell. I tend to think that reselling is usually more trouble than it's worth um, on most items. I usually don't sell my stuff. I mean, I have stuff from when I was quite young that I've held on to to this day. When I was very young, I didn't take great care of my stuff per se, but um, there's a lot that I still have. So yeah, um, you got the cloth cape, which can like double as sort of like a robed look. You got uh, two belts. So you've got kind of the cloth belt. You also have a hard plastic belt. So again, they're really just kind of giving you different options as far as how you may choose 
to display your shredder. Um, he's ripped. He's ripped, folks. Um, let me see. Yeah, so it's just a little Velcro thing. So you can display it as just kind of the cape, cloth cape, or again, he comes packaged with a plastic one. You got the plastic belt as well. Um, again, all of the modern articulation that you would expect on a figure of this scale and nice, good plastic quality. It's pretty nice. I don't know. I don't know what would be better as far as the display option, like the plastic cape or the cloth cape. Cloth cape looks okay. I like it well enough. They have essentially the same, they're more or less the same color. Um, when I display these guys, there's a, it looks like they have a little bit of, um, of wire included in the cape, so you can do things like give it more of a billowing look. Good recreation of the original figure. Um, a little surprised there's no ab crunch. Um, of course, obviously there wasn't an ab crunch on the original, but for all the other, you know, articulation that they're throwing in that may not have been present on the original, I would think it would be probably pretty simple to add in an ab crunch if they had uh, wanted to do that. Uh, the toy, obviously Shredder portrayed as shirtless. Um, in the cartoon, Shredder was normally wearing a bit of like a, a shawl. So he had like a gray, gray like gi that he had on. It was one of the ways in which the appearances between the toys and the show were kind of a little bit different from one another. And again, why something like this can sort of exist as a parallel to the uh, Nika lines, which are, again, recreating those cartoon appearances. This one, more of just kind of a love letter to those original toys. Looks pretty cool. Um, at this point, it's really just kind of tricky in terms of knowing how and where I'm going to be displaying all of these turtles because again, they're all kind of nice in their own separate ways. And now since I have more than a few of each line, it's kind of a question of like, do you display them together? Do you give them separate displays? Um, yeah, it's wild. Another one that I actually, in this case, I am taking advantage of that alternate hand. I think it's a cool option. But nice, I mean, the colors, the plastic, everything. Just really nice, high quality stuff. Um, as should be expected, considering again, it does have a collector price tag along with it. Um, so, you know, they're doing well. They're doing good. I like how these are. I, I had, you know, once I had decided that I was gonna get one, I pretty much knew that I was going to be committed to, at the very least, getting at least those first four waves to get all the turtles. And I like pretty much all of the toys that they've um, revealed out of those first four waves. So I was sort of pot committed at that point. Um, but they're nice. I mean, I can't. I can't say that I'm disappointed. Opening these up, I'm not really surprised by anything that I'm, I'm seeing with it. I knew that they were gonna be nice, high quality. Um, so it's just kind of a confirmation of that. I've only heard good things about these, really. Um, the only complaints that I see about it are the price tag, because again, you're usually gonna be looking at dropping about 50 bucks a pop on each of these guys. Sadly, there's no real way around that, 
but again, at the very least, I can say like you are getting nice quality. You're getting a ton of display options. Um, you know, 50 bucks a pop is kind of what you're looking at with some Mezco releases. Um, Mezco does a lot of like higher end, slightly redesigned um, comic book guys for the most part, or at least they have a line of that. They have some movie figures too. I have just like, I have one or two Mezcos, but this falls within kind of that same spectrum of um, collectible that I would say Mezco does. And it's very similar in quality and pretty much the same price. You're gonna pay usually at least about 50 for a Mezco, but they have very high quality plastics. They have nice individualized paint applications. Um, Mezco has a tendency of including like uh, soft goods or, you know, fabrics for the costumes on their characters. Uh, these are pretty similar in that regard. Again, pretty much on par there. Um, you can see here again where you have kind of that better sense of scale between these characters. So Leo rightfully is a little bit shorter than Shredder. I think that's pretty much in line with every depiction of them that you've kind of seen across the many ages and interpretations of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I would say the original toys were all pretty much the exact same size. They were, it was a four inch line. Um, this guy feels heavy, so I just know he's gonna be a heavier figure. Bebop. But yeah, really nice stuff. Um, turtles are really, I mean, it's a good time if you are a Turtles fan. And actually, you know, I was mentioning how it's a little rough to get into Nika because of the availability of some of those guys last week. Um, but between last week and this week, a lot of the, a lot of more recent releases for the Nika lines are available directly through Nika. So I was trying to take this additional like extra price tag off, but all I succeeded to do is uh, mess up the barcode on the original, which doesn't matter. I mean, I don't really care. This is just a protective sleeve, basically. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I mean, getting some of the Nika stuff is a little bit easier right now, actually. Um, and it looks like they're trying to make efforts to make it a little bit easier to get in general, too. Um, so yeah, I mean, really a good time if you are a Turtles fan. And since they're nearing that like 30th anniversary, uh, there's no real surprise because basically the people that have the most nostalgia for this kind of stuff are hitting the point where they may theoretically have some disposable income and they're, you know, fish in a barrel as far as being targets for this sort of uh, higher end collector toy line. You know, take for example, me, um, who is now suddenly collecting two high end toy line versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They really got me, they really did, I don't know. But again, you know, one of the things that I've talked about on my streams since I've started this, uh, you know, streaming channel is that there's various franchises with which I have varying levels of uh, fondness for or any sort of nostalgia. I would say Turtles definitely falls into the high nostalgia rating for me. Um, I had a ton growing up. I liked them a lot. And uh, I still do. I love being a turtle. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, yeah, big boy. Real big guy. Um, I can tell why he was so much heavier than, um, than the other two. It's, it, it might not be easy to tell with him in the package, but I'll get him out and you'll see. I mean, he, he definitely appears to tower over the other two that I have so far. Um, so this is an, an instance of them Kind of taking a little creative liberty and not just accurately recreating the scale of the original release 
uh, toy. Uh, this is them kind of making the toy, again, more in line with how you may have imagined or felt that he should be in comparison with some of the other characters. Oh, really big, bulky, heavy. Um, still comes with a ton of alternative accessories. He too comes with an alternative head. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, alternative head stuff. I'm gonna ditch some of this packaging. A lot of this is to protect it while it's being shipped, so it'll still be fine just in terms of storage to ditch some of that packaging. And again, I don't really have any intent to ever resell this, so I don't really hold on to packaging which, again, the point of this whole streaming channel is that I'm getting some of this stuff out of packaging. And that way I can free up some space in my house. Though, I will be holding on to this packaging. Because it's nice. It's high-quality packaging. Um, big, big. Uh, big, big boy. This is a large action figure. Let me get him open. I, I'm... Really, I'm really looking forward to getting this guy out of all of this because he looks pretty excellent. Um, these larger scale figures are probably going to be some of the highlight of this line, I would guess, because um, again, it's going to be kind of giving due to characters that maybe were always limited a little bit by the original format of those toy lines. I was a big fan, and like I said in the past, maybe my favorite version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles really is that 2013, affectionately referred to as 2K13 online. Um, they had so many really cool character designs. And for example, like uh, Leatherhead in that show was really big. Like he was portrayed as like at least twice the size of the turtles. Um, and it was just kind of a shame because in the toy line, they didn't really, I guess they couldn't really recreate that. I think even with the more recent um, rise of TMNT, they had characters that, again, canonically, they were much larger than the Turtles. But the toy line's limitations from Playmates, Playmates only really makes little four-inch figures. So you didn't really get to capture or convey the sense of a difference in size. The uh, the Nika cartoon line is pretty good about capturing the scale of the characters in terms of the um, uh, their appearance on the show. But this one, again, just kind of the idea that they're taking more of the idea of like, well, how big should Bebop feel or look or play versus some of the other characters. Um, and they just make this big, massive, like, hulking figure. That's really cool. They also, like, squeezed in a ton of detail on this guy. Like, the sculpt is very, very impressive in person. Oh. And there's a lot of, again, things that are just really direct references to the original toy itself. Because um, there was a lot of sculpted detail on that original toy that... They didn't necessarily do paint applications for. But with this, every little every little detail, seam, all of that stuff is all accounted for and just kind of lovingly rendered um, in a way that the original toy line wasn't able to. Um, I really like that as a concept, just like the idea that they're taking these toys and kind of giving you the version that in your imagination you were playing with. I think that's just a, a really cool way to approach something like this. Um, they also do like a, they actually do a He-Man line. And like I mentioned, they do a Thundercats line. And I think those are also referred to as Ultimates. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think they probably do something similar as far as their approach to that. But um, yeah, with this... Slightly less accessories, fewer hands, um, a little bit fewer weapons. You still do get the um, the unpainted sprue version of the toy accessories. But 
considering how much goes into like the actual size of the character in this case and just like I said the attention to detail as far as the sculpt I don't really mind um, as a matter of fact like one extra head one extra set of hands is probably about the sweet spot for me in terms of including alternative uh, hands and heads any more than that and it just starts to feel like a lot to keep track of oh. Big boy. I'll set him back here next to the other two just so you can get a sense of uh, how big he is in comparison to the others from this wave. Because again, to me, it's pretty impressive. This is a, a pretty large figure. Um, definitely can see why he would run a little bit more expensive. As a matter of fact, you would think that he would be more expensive than the other figures in the line. Um, but he's just the same cost as the others. Um, so, yeah. Taller than Shredder by a considerable amount. Much taller, of course, than Leo. Like, Leo comes up to about his chest. So he's a big, big, big boy. Um, like I mentioned, he does have... Uh, an alternative head. It's the same sculpt. Uh, this is again more of a uh, reference to the original toy. The original toy, he had kind of like a soft plastic head on the uh, Bebop release. And he had this kind of, some might say over the top, pink um, airbrushing on that soft plastic. I actually think it makes the figure, to me, pop a little bit more. I like that extra detail. I think I might keep the pink head on. Uh, on the original Bebop toy as well, there was a lot of sculpted detail, including like, he had a little knee brace, um, and they included that, and it's actually functioning. It's fully painted in this one. All of these stitches that he has in his pants, even like his feet, like the shoes have little sculpted detail here. A ton of sculpted detail on his vest from texturing as well as like the um, threading on his turtle shells. Fully painted, ton of detail. This is really, I think, this is really where you can see the, uh, the concept of this line really just shine. Um, there's some other figures that they've released that I think do a similarly good job of just kind of justifying why this is a collector's line and why the price tag may be what it is. Um, this is a very, very, I would say, deluxe figure. Um, even if you were collecting other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy lines, it might be worth, you know, picking this guy up just to have kind of a nice, really big uh, enemy figure for your dudes. Um, but obviously he also looks great and just scales really well with the other figures in this line. I'm not sure what the best way for him to hold this knife might be. Uh, it's a little bit of a tight fit in the old hand there. Um, but a very, very nice figure. Like, again, great quality in terms of the plastic, the paint application, the sculpt, um, the size is fantastic. Uh, really... I mean, he's probably the most impressive so far uh, of just these first three that I've opened. I like the other two quite a bit. I would say in a way, you know, Shredder kind of comes off as a little plain in terms of the figure, but I think that's more of just like, the designs on Shredder and Leo are kind of simple. Um, Bebop is one of those ones that they started getting into like, there's a significant amount of detail here um, and they're really able to kind of like play that up to the full effect with a figure this size and scale. Like, he looks wonderful. Highly recommend. Highly, highly recommend. Um, I like him with the knife and the gun. I'm going to leave him with that for right now. Um, and I'm going to leave the pink, 
the pink head on because I think the pink head actually looks pretty nice. I had seen some photos and I didn't think that it, I thought that I would end up going with the solid brown head instead. Um, but I think in person actually the pink, the pink looks a little bit more interesting to me. I think that he'll display better that way. Um, should you decide to pick up a Bebop for yourself, then you can pick your own favorite head to display him with. Um, but yeah, wow, great. I mean, man, I really need more space to display these guys because they look awesome. That Bebop is just so impressive. I'm, I'm very excited for some of the other uh, figures that I have that I will probably open. I don't know, maybe I'll do a weekend stream. Like I was saying, uh, this Friday is my birthday, so I actually took that off from work. So maybe I'll have a little bit more free time. Maybe I'll do that um, Lego stream that I've been threatening to do, where I finally get into the Winnie the Pooh. We'll see. No idea. Maybe, maybe not. I've also still been thinking that I would like to upgrade this streaming setup a little bit. I don't think I've mentioned it on stream before, but I'm actually just streaming directly from my iPad into the Twitch app. Um, but I, I have a nice camera that I theoretically could be using if I were to set it up with my desktop. I could also maybe get like a microphone so the audio quality would start to uh, pick up a little bit too. There's a lot of things I could do. It's just a matter of how much effort am I really wanting to toss in to it at this point. And for right now, it hadn't been very much, and I haven't had a ton of time, but I definitely do think that I might like to do something a little bit higher quality. This is the last one of this wave. Like I said, I actually have another wave, so there's another four that I have that I could get to and start to open. Um, I'm not looking to marathon anything. I got a little bit of a later start with today, and these guys, they just take a little bit more effort because again, as a collectible, I think it takes a little bit more to just get them out and get them out of that package and even just sort of um, acknowledge the figure itself. Uh, this is the Mutagen Man, another somewhat heavier box. So I'm thinking he's, again, probably a little bit larger. Mutagen Man, it kind of feels like for these first four waves, they're kind of picking... I mean, I guess all of these could theoretically be said to be kind of fan favorites, but you have like prominent story characters, and then you just also kind of have people that, characters that had very interesting toys. Uh, I would say Mutagen Man, even though, yes, he did appear in, like, the, um, he definitely appeared in the show, but I would say he's, uh, he's probably featured here a little bit more based off of the strength of nostalgia for the original figure. There's a number of people that were a little disappointed that this uh, release, this Mutagen Man figure, does not recreate the ability of the original Mutagen Man figure as far as holding water. Uh, so the original Mutagen Man, he's basically like a bunch of organs in a tank, uh, which again just kind of goes back to that original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy line concept where they were just, they would take gross concepts and really kind of run with it. Mutagen Man is definitely one of those characters. Uh, I've seen pictures of this guy. He looks very good. Um, I don't really mind that he doesn't have the water gimmick, but I could see being a little disappointed in that. But everything I've seen about this guy, the sculpt is another one of those, like, very impressive. Oh, yeah, and he is. He's quite big. Um, not as big as Bebop, but, again, bigger than Shredder, bigger than Leonardo. Um, wow, really cool. Uh, Entertainment Earth, maybe? I think Entertainment Earth actually has a uh, special edition of this guy that's glow-in-the-dark. My wife loves glow-in-the-dark toys. Maybe we will end up getting that glow-in-the-dark version as well. He looks great. He looks really cool. Um, your mileage may vary, but I just think this guy, as far as looking interesting, he looks awesome. Um, yeah, well, you know, let me just shut up and get him open because he, he looks good. Another case of, uh, just being a little bit of a bigger figure. One of those things that allows you to really kind of like 
expand on the concept and like really go all in on that sculpt of the original. Um, just cool stuff. Now here's a little bit in terms of where you're losing out by not having the water gimmick because I think before a lot of these much smaller accessories, the idea was that you pop it open, you put it in here, and then it's kind of like floating suspended uh, in that water. But Super 7, the manufacturers of these, they've kind of explained that to give them the level, to give Mutagen Man at least the level of articulation that they've been being consistent with with the entire line, they couldn't make the plastic uh, watertight in the way that the original toy was. So you get these kind of small accessories. You can put them inside in the same way, but they're just not going to float in the way that the original Mutagen Man's accessories were made to float inside of his little water tank. Uh, man, what a cool figure. Um, this is another one of those figures that I would kind of even say... Maybe you're not a turtle collector. If you weren't, I think that if you were just a fan of just like either really cool or like really gross out style figures, this would be a figure that I could see appealing to uh, non-turtle fans, just people that are more just general collectibles or like gross out rat fink style kind of stuff. I don't know. That's what this puts me in mind of. Um, just like with the other releases in this line, you have some alternative accessories, a pair of hands, and then you've got the little sprued accessories that again recreate kind of the options that went along with the original toy. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really starting to come down now outside. Um, some rain. Rain in my neighborhood. Uh, my mom was telling me that there's going to be softball, a softball-sized hail. I hope it's not too bad. I don't know. I definitely would hate to lose power while streaming, so hopefully that does not happen. Um, all right. Not too much in terms of packaging to remove for these big figures. Um... The smaller figures had a little twist tie and then they had little like plastic straps that you had to cut through. These big guys are just two big twist ties holding them in. Uh, this is another case of just really feeling like the size of the figure is uh, pretty satisfying. It's an awesome scale in comparison with